Welcome to You Are Not A Goat. If you want to follow your passion and do what you love, this is the podcast for you. Without further ado, here's your host, Slimy Zions. Hello and welcome to another edition of You Are Not A Goat. My name is Shlomi Zayants and I am your host. First off, I just wanted to thank you for taking some of your precious time every week to listen to my podcast. I appreciate it tremendously. And I would like to welcome all the new visitors and new listeners who have recently found out about the podcast. We now have people listening really all over the world. Uh, this week for the first time we have listeners in Australia and in Sweden. There are listeners in Italy, in Israel, in the United States, in Canada, in England, in Turkey. So we really got a wide selection of people from all sorts of countries who are listening. And you can listen to the show on the iTunes app, uh, in the podcast app, in the Google Play Music app, on Podbean, Stitcher, CastBox, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts, this podcast is available. Thank you so much for listening once again. And for any of you who enjoy the podcast, please leave us a review on iTunes when you have a chance. It really helps the show grow. Also, for those of you who are new to the podcast, check out some of our older episodes. We already have five episodes in the podcast library, so check those out. Each one of them is great, and you will really enjoy them. As some of you know, I am now traveling. I'm in the United States for a couple of weeks, and I needed a place to record the podcast because I don't have access to my regular office, so I actually reached out to a wonderful friend, Benjamin Spitz, founder and CEO of OHZ Security, and he lent me their offices. So we're actually recording right now from the office. Check them out. You can go to their website, ohdsecurity.com. You can Google them. I'm sure you'll find their phone number as well. And uh, really cool company. They can watch your security cameras for you. Make sure if you like, let's say you're a homeowner or you have investment properties, um, rentals and stuff like that. You can make sure that nobody's loitering on your property or trespassing or breaking in. They're open 24-7, 365. OHZ Security, thank you for all of your help and check them out. Now, let's get into this week's episode. So, on the show this week, we have a fellow named Kamaj Silva. He is a entrepreneur, started his own company called Sneaker Tub, and it is a sneaker subscription service based out of Toronto, Ontario. And he's had a, a lot of success. He started his company with $700 in the bank after he got fired from his last job. And he ended up on a really big Canadian TV show, which brought him a lot of fame. And it's not a huge company, but it's a successful company started by somebody who's very motivated and very driven to succeed. And I bet that we can learn something nice from this episode because every one of us has the ability to succeed. So let's take a listen to Kamaj Silva, founder and CEO of Sneaker Tub. Hi, how are you guys? Good, thank God. How are you? Uh, not too bad, thank you. Hey, so I saw you guys on YouTube. I saw the video of your pitch to the Dragons of Dragon Den, which is a Canadian TV show probably modeled after Shark Tank. Uh, yeah, so Dragon's Den is, uh, I think probably Dragon's Den started before Shark Tank. So um, it's it was then licensed by the U.S., and I think Dragons in UK was the original, then it was Canada, then it's US. Uh, I think the concept's from some Japanese show originally. Oh, wow, I did not know that. Okay. So, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and how you started the business? Uh, yeah, so uh, I am um, I'm Kamar Silva, um, and I'm, I'm based in uh, Toronto, uh, Ontario, in Canada. That's where I grew um, up. I'm, oh, really? Yeah. What a small world. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, basically my background is actually not fashion or not sneakers or not streetwear. Like my um, my day job before starting Sneaker Tub was um, I worked as a marketing manager for a company called Entertainment One, which is a film distribution company uh, here in uh, Toronto. Okay. Uh, so they handle um, distribu- theatrical distribution for movies like The Hunger Games, Expendables, um, and a, a whole bunch of other movies. Uh, they did the Twilight franchise, like, back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. So I was, I was working as a marketing manager for, um, for 
uh, Entertainment One uh, before I started with Sneakers Up. So worked there for five years. Uh, suddenly, uh, one day, just out of the blue, um, they laid, I think, about, um, they laid off like 100 or 150 people. So like my whole team got laid off. Oh, uh, I was, yeah, so I was planning, I was planning on like what to do next. Should I, um, should I go for like 100 interviews and try to convince people to hire me or should I just start my own thing? So that's, uh, that's how Sneaker Tub came about. Um, just started with a small idea and uh, with uh, $700 in my savings. <laughs> wow. So if you had $700 in your savings, how can it be that you supported yourself while you were originally starting the business? Well, like it's um, seven hundred dollars went through to the business. Uh, fortunately, my wife was uh, employed at the time, uh, uh, so we had some kind of money coming into the household. Um, but but yeah, like all of the seven hundred dollars that I had left in my account went uh, went went towards uh, starting sneaker tub. Yeah. Wow. And so, how did you get that idea to start a sneaker subscription box? I mean, I was always a, I was always a sneakerhead. Like I was always a sneaker collector. I I liked um, I I was inspired by a lot of fashion designers. Um, kind of like dabbed in a little bit in the world of fashion, as in like I like to dress nicely, like to wear like nice sneakers. Um, so and I, and I also liked subscription boxes, like the subscription box model, which is like a mystery package you get in the mail every month. You don't know what's in it. Right. Um, I did a bit of research and found out there's nothing, uh, nothing similar for sneakers. So uh, the bright idea, the, the the light bulb, boom went on in my head. I mean, I didn't know if it like if people would accept it, but um, uh, it, it wasn't like an overnight success, obviously. But like, yeah, I kept pushing at it, and um, and it uh, somehow I found out like people actually like the idea of receiving a mystery pair of uh, sneakers in the mail every month. <laughs> Right. So I, I think I would love that idea. What do you guys yeah. service? Um, we we basically, so our, our main customer base is actually, though we're based in Canada, 95% of my customers are um, in the U.S. So mm -hmm. we, we ship anywhere in the U.S. Uh, we, do, we actually ship anywhere in the world. Uh, we have a lot of customers from Europe, uh, a lot of customers from the Middle East, and... Uh, uh, and Canada as well. So we uh, and we and we uh, also are direct with a lot of the leading brands like New Balance, Puma, uh, Ransom, Saucony, uh, clothing brands like Alpha Industries, Vitaly, Staple, um, Stan Socks. A lot of the clean, the big cleaning guys like Jason Mark, Craft Protect, Sneaker Lab, uh, and a whole bunch of other brands. Like we have about close to about 35 to 40 brands in our portfolio right now. So you're working with like all the big boys. We are working with all the big boys except for a few of the big boys, <laughs> which will come through pretty soon, hopefully. <laughs> okay. And so if I was a customer looking to get into subscription boxes and then I, I came across Sneaker Tub online, what's the process mm -hmm. like? What, what would happen when I signed up? Um, so it's, it's basically pretty easy. So our, for our, for our general tiers, as in like our basic subscriptions, you basically uh, receive a mystery pair of sneakers plus uh, two to three accessories in the mail that we curate ourselves. But for our higher tier subscriptions, like the elite and the VIP subscription, you go through something like a questionnaire. You, you basically tell us like, what do you want? What kind of colors you like? Like what kind of sneakers you wouldn't wear? Like what are your favorite sports teams? Kind of thing. So, and one of our stylists will curate based on that questionnaire. Um, but yeah, it's pretty easy. You just log into, you go on to sneakertub.com, um, which is the global site and sneakertub.ca is the Canadian site. Um, and you just pick your package, uh, and it's, it, it's a pretty easy process. Um, and, and with our subscription, there's no, uh, no commitment. Uh, you can cancel anytime or you can skip your subscription as long as you want to. Um, mm -hmm. You can cancel, you can reactivate, so it's, it's a pretty easy platform. Uh, you can change your packages every month if you wish to. You can go from a basic to a premium and back to a basic, a basic subscription without any, any hassle at all. And how many different packages do you have? Um, so currently we have four different packages, uh, the basic one being Sneaker Top Lite, 
which mm-hmm. is priced at $49.99 uh, in the U.S. So with that subscription, you get you get a pair of mystery sneakers in the mail, no accessories. Uh, the pair of sneakers can be worth anything from $70 to $100, um, but you pay for $49.99. Um, wow. And the next tier up is Sneaker Tab Original, which you get a pair of sneakers with two to three accessories like hats, um, T-shirts, uh, and uh, socks, and other stuff like that. But um, basically, like we deal with a lot of hat brands like New Era, Michelin, Ness, uh, 47 brand. So you, you're, you're actually getting like a $35 hat plus like an $80 or $100 sneaker. And the whole whole package is worth up to like $120 to $150. Um, for the original package, but then we have the elite package, which is one forty nine ninety nine hundred forty nine ninety nine, uh, which includes the two, uh, which includes two pairs of sneakers and premium accessories. And yeah, the VIP package is a quarterly package, which uh, is two hundred and fifty nine ninety nine. Wow! Which includes pre- uh, all premium products. And what percentage of your people would say take which packages? Uh, we have it's it's like a sixty forty split actually. So like the basic package is being sixty percent obviously because of the price point, um, and uh, but forty percent of the packages are actually uh, uh, the premium packages. Wow. So are you saying that for like forty nine dollars a month, I can get a brand name pair of sneakers in the mail every month? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Do you find that people are signing up just for one month to get a certain good sneaker and then they cancel? Like basically like buying it on sale? Um, uh, what I've found out is like we have we have customers like I started Sneaker Tab two years ago. We still have customers like who's been a member for uh, basically since like inception to this day, like who hasn't canceled or skipped a month. Uh, I, I, I find like, yes, people do cancel uh, sometimes. People like pay seventy dollars and expect like a three hundred, three hundred and forty dollar pair of like rare Adidas Yeezy boots, which which a company can never like discount like that much. Obviously, like the wholesale on a pair of Yeezys is not even like seventy dollars; it's like one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollar wholesale uh, yeah. on those pairs. So like that, you you find the odd customer who who expects way more than uh, more than we can offer them. Um, but I think right now, um, after two years, we have we have like the right mix of uh, subscribers or like the right right subscriber who understands what the model is and like what what to kind of expect. Because it's you have to be pretty open minded uh, when subscribing to us because we deal with a lot of brands uh, like Saucony, which is not you know which is a which was originally a performance brand. But like if you look look into the brand history, like their original line was like a crazy, uh, very like premium material sneakers back in the day. So they're, they're kind of bringing that whole vibe back. So like you have, you have to have like an open mind um, to be, to be one of uh, sneaker club subscribers. Cause yeah, we do deal with some, some, some hype sneakers uh, in our premium packages, but, right. but mostly it's, it's, it's a variety of sneakers from variety of brands in the world. Like for example, like ransom holding company is like a Canadian premium luxury sneaker company. So we've included them in a couple of our boxes. So some of our subscribers would have paid $70 and got like a $200 sneaker in their package. Wow. And how many yeah. subscribers <laughs> do you have at the time, like right now? Uh, so we, we are up to about 1,000 subscribers a month, roughly, but it obviously fluctuates uh, during month. like high, d- during like Christmas and holiday season. Um, it, it obviously goes up, but um, I think average we we do about we ship out about a thousand to about thirteen hundred packages a month. Wow, nice. Yeah, so we are we're still a very we're still a very small business like compared to some of the other like big subscription guys, but um, but obviously like our price point is a little higher than like a subscription that charges you nineteen ninety uh, nineteen ninety nine a month for for a package right so it's like um to give or take it's it's more like the price is high and like we're currently happy at the subscriber level that we have right now um but yeah obviously like the food we keep growing every day 
And how did you make contact with other brands when you were starting this? Like, how did you get them to trust you? Weren't they skeptical? Oh, they were very skeptical. They, they didn't want to even, like, listen to, like, listen to my, like, pictures or, like, my phone calls. Some stopped even answering the phone calls. So, like, I tried, like, calling them from different numbers. But it's, um, but it's, 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 it's a game of, like, trust, basically. So, uh, I think Puma was the first brand that uh, gave us that opportunity to showcase, like, what we can do, like how we're different to like the traditional retail or how we're different to like traditional online retail because people, because there's, when, when we, when we started, when Sneaker Tub was launched, there was no such thing as a sneaker subscription service. So people were always like very skeptical if this is like something really dodgy or whatever. So like it's, it takes time. Like I understand where they're coming from. Obviously like some kid off the street being like, Oh, like I have a sneaker subscription service, like give me an account, like, Obviously, it seems very dodgy, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think we've we've uh, we've made uh, we've made great progress with brands. Like uh, right now, like we're in a very comfortable place with um, with the brands that we work with, and uh, it it was it it was an uphill battle, obviously at uh, first. But um, yeah, I mean, it's some brands we're still trying to trying to lock down some brands, but they are you know uh, most of these companies have. Um, have people CEOs and like directors who are very traditional you know like we only do like brick and mortar retail like this like this industry is like we want to keep it where it's at like not make it like not like go with the flow and like change with evolution kind of thing but right. um, but it's like in, in every business that's that's the case and then there come the disruptors and the market gets disrupted and everyone will have to kind of follow suit right <laughs> so like it's that that day will come, but um, that I think with the brands that we have currently, we are direct with. We are very comfortable with them. They are very comfortable with us, um, and we have a very great relationship. Wow! And you said Puma was the first one to you know sell stuff to you. That's surprising because yeah. they're really big. I would think a smaller company would be the first one. Yeah, Puma. Puma came along first uh, because they had a great sales rep uh, uh, called Angie back in the day and like she 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 was young and she she got what we were going for um mm -hmm. so she uh she was a great advocate in getting us that account um and then like Saucony came along Ransom came along um and um, New Balance came along uh, about a year ago so we're, we're very happy with where we're at now can you tell me a little bit about the uh Dragon's Den experience and how you got on the show and what that was like uh, yeah, so Dragons Den. Uh, originally, when I started Sneaky Tub in twenty, I think twenty, yeah, twenty eighteen or twenty sixteen, um, Dragons Den had seen some kind of press uh, release we've done, and uh, one of the producers reached out to me and asked me whether we, I would like to like audition for the show. Because uh, obviously, you 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 audition with the producers first, and if your pitch is good enough, they put you in front of the Dragons. Uh, they record the show, but just because you pitch to the dragons it, it it doesn't mean that like it's guaranteed like your episode will air kind of thing right. so in 2016 obviously like we just started i wasn't ready so i just told the producer you know like we just started we don't want to go or we don't want to come on the show and like embarrass ourselves uh, so because we didn't have like like a decent revenue like in the first two three months so obviously we didn't have accounts so we sometimes bought stuff at retail and like we were not making like money at first, um, but then tw then come 2017, and uh, we were at a very comfortable place. Um, and within a year, we've probably done about a quarter million dollars of sales. Nice. Um, and uh, so, so, so I reached out to them, and I was like, I think we're ready to come on the show. Um, again, had to go through a audition process, uh, did that, and got in front of the dragons. I mean, like I'm. I'm very comfortable. Like I know my numbers and I know my business. So I like, I, I think because of that, like I was not nervous at all. Um, and the dragons were super nice, like great energy in the room. Um, but you guys probably saw it was like a seven minute cut. Uh, uh, how long was the, pitch, the actual but, pitch? Uh, it went on for about an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. I saw so they, seven and they're and half like minutes. really, yeah, they, they really drilled me with the numbers, but like you guys didn't see it because the final cut was only, uh, only um, seven minutes and something. Uh, so yeah, like an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, so they got down into the nitty gritty of the business as well. 
And do you find that you got more subscribers because the show aired? Um, in Canada, yes, because before Dragon's Den, we uh, we were we were exclusively shipping to the U.S., but we didn't we were really not focusing on Canada. We had a Canadian subscription because obviously, like um, the price points are different for the U.S. and Canada, so we, so we uh, keep it separate. So the .ca is the Canadian site. So we were we were not very focused on it, but then after I. I, I went on Dragons and after I did the pitch, um, it's pretty much the same business. Uh, it's a pretty much the same business model. It's just um, we, we sometimes um, there's different products that we can ship to the U.S. and we can't ship to the U.S. So so, the, so in in the U.S. we use like other uh, a third party to uh, fulfill those orders and ship from within the U.S. So so we we started focusing on Canada. Basically, what I'm trying to say is. Uh, after I pitched on Dragons Den, and we we started building a Canadian following after that. Um, but yeah, like yeah, it it grew significantly. I'd, I'd say the Canadian business grew significantly after um, after the after the pitch. But um, but more than the pitch, it's it's the YouTube video that went viral. So it's I think it's at a, um, a little over a million views now. And there was a Facebook video someone uploaded, like not not from not not from sneaker shop, but someone randomly found it uh, and uploaded it. That video hit like a million views as well. So I think we gained a lot of subscribers like through social media um, than Dragon's Den. But yeah, Dragon's Den was a great outlet for Canada. You're really lucky because I know so many people who are breaking their backs trying to get onto Shark Tank or a show like that, and they called you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I think Shark Tank does some scouting as well, and so does Dragons Den. Uh, I mean, just because they invited uh, you to pitch on the show, I mean, it's it's like there's nothing guaranteed, obviously, like if you get enough to put you on the show. But it's, yeah, it, it, it's a lucky call that they like somehow found like an article of or, like some kind of press release that we've done like back in the day. Um, yeah, and I know like Shark Tank's like crazy big in, in, the, in the U.S. and a lot of people are trying to get on there. <laughs> Yeah. And once you got the deal, how has it been working with the Dragons? How was that experience? Um, so basically what happened with the deal was uh, we, uh, the Dragons and us, so what happens is it, it is a TV deal. Obviously, there is, um, after that, there's a due diligence process. So we, uh, so both parties agreed we should not go ahead with the deal. So we did not actually end up taking the deal. Uh, but... Uh, but nevertheless, the business like grew so far. So we we are not we are in contact with them. Like we call them for advice, um, but the official deal um, did not uh, go through. But we're still we're still in contact with them. Like we're opening up our retail spot uh, called Milk Toronto uh, next week. So some of the dragons will will be there. So like uh, the support from CBC Dragons Den and the actual dragons are, ha, has been great. Like it's not all of the deals go through on the show um, for different, for a variety of reasons. Um, but yeah, like they've been, they've been great supporters of, uh, of the sneaker top brand. That's interesting. I had no idea that, uh, that the deal, sometimes the deals don't go through. Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of deals, only about 20 to 30% of the deals actually go through on like both shows. <laughs> oh, wow. And you yeah. said you're opening a retail store? Yeah, we are opening a retail store called Milk Toronto, which is also a very different theme. Uh, so it's uh, the store set up in kind of a uh, milk kind of theme. So we'll have like we have like a massive milk carton label wall under on, on in, inside the store. All mm -hmm. of the products are merchandised in um, milk cartons uh, and milk uh, crates. Uh, we have a giant like shoebox filled with like actual cereal in the store, so it's 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 more on more more of a uh, I'd say like a concept sneaker and street fair store. So so it's which is um, it's under the sneaker top brand umbrella, but it's 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 treated as a different brand. And what you're going to be doing is selling the brands that are available through the subscription. Uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be doing. Uh, We'll be doing those, but obviously the products will be, um, it, it's not the same product that you get in the subscription that we'll actually sell in, in store. And we, we have some uh, exclusive collaborations coming up with uh, a few brands as well. We'll have like limited edition milk products, um, as in milk, milk branded products um, in the store as well. So it, it's going to be a, 
uh, it's going to be a little different than a traditional um, uh, sneaker and street wear store. So in essence, it seems like you're going to be starting sort of your own brand. Correct. Uh, that's the plan. Obviously, uh, a couple of years down the line, we want to we want to have our own brand. Uh, we want to sell our own brand, branded products, uh, and uh, try our hand at uh, doing that. <laughs> nice. Congratulations. I wish you a lot of luck. Thank on you. That. Thank you. Thank you. Now, going back to the beginning of the business, how did you find your first customers, or how did they find you? Uh, so we did a lot of Instagram. We did a lot of actually reaching out to customers, like one by one. Like I used to hustle like the first ten customers, basically, like on Instagram. I'll be, I'll, I'll message them and be like, "Oh, there's this thing, like such a sneaker subscription. Do you guys want to try it out? Here's like a ten dollar discount kind of thing." Um, so I, 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 that's how I got like the first ten customers. Uh, then I reached out to a lot of the PR outlets, um, and uh, we got we got some great press at the start. Um, mm -hmm. So that's how we probably got like the first hundred customers or so. So you were just sending them direct messages on Instagram? Oh yeah, I was spamming the hell out of them, man. You can get banned <laughs> for doing that. Yeah, I got. I think I got banned uh, probably once, but then I stopped copy pasting and just like just wrote different messages to people, like typed them individually. <laughs> wow! And do you find that most of your business still comes through social media? Uh, yeah, I think I think about eighty percent of my business is of our businesses through social media and uh, a lot of um, a lot of word of mouth to like friends informing other friends and or, like seeing unboxings on like YouTube like that's 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 uh, that's done great for us right and do you advertise on social media or is it just like your brand's page I mean do you do sponsored uh, we do, posts uh, we do sponsored posts yeah we do uh, we do a couple of sponsored posts a month uh, I think we should be doing more sponsored posts, but uh, with everything that's going on, it hasn't been a focus of ours. But like obviously in 2018, Q4, that's going to be our focus of ours, ours um, to um, do to to do more sponsored posts. But honestly, like it's it's the community that we've uh, we've uh, had uh, sneak have had people following sneaker tab. Like it's it, it it has a sense of community. Like people. People like to receive the boxes, uh, mm -hmm. make videos, and upload upload on YouTube, and other people see it. Like they do the, the same. Unboxings? So we've got this like yeah, the unboxings. We've got this great sense of like community, like uh, among uh, sneaker tub subscribers. Right. And when you say social media, what what do you say is your strongest uh, platform? Instagram. Uh, yeah, Instagram is number one. YouTube is probably number two. Really, more than Facebook. More than Facebook, yeah. Because oh, I've heard a lot of people. Who I think, say I think, versa. I think, I think our demo, which is, uh, you would think it's it's skills higher, but it's actually thirteen to like nineteen is our core demo. Um, I don't think that demo lives on Facebook. That they they live on Instagram, YouTube, and Snapchat. Yeah, and Twitter is dead, right? Twitter, uh, I think, is officially dead. Uh, 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 like I, I see, like some people doing great on Twitter. Like, get, I I don't know if. You, follow uh, Gary V at all um, yeah I do yeah so Gary V is like great on Twitter like that's probably the easiest way to get to Gary V because there's like um, he does so much stuff on like all, all sorts of social media yeah, but I think everywhere. yeah he's everywhere uh, but I think like yeah officially we can we can uh, put Twitter to rest <laughs> so to all our listeners we're predicting this you heard it here first Twitter is dead <laughs> <laughs> Don't take my word for it. If it, I mean, like honestly, if Twitter works for you, it works for you, right? It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, we we haven't focused a lot on Twitter as well. I, so I think that's probably. But there's a reason why, why you're not focusing there because I'm looking at all these young brands, and most of them do not have a large Twitter following. Whereas on Facebook, sure. Instagram, on YouTube, they're massive, and there's a reason behind yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Instagram being like Instagram's like always like obviously it's under the Facebook brand of umbrella. It's like they're innovative. Uh, you know, they try to buy obviously in a business sense, like they try to buy Snapchat, and then Snapchat said no. Like we wanna we wanna keep it like our own platform. And then what, what did Facebook? What, what did uh, Instagram do? They started uh, stories. including Snapchat f features like uh, Instagram stories, and now they've like come up with like the vertical uh, IGTV. Uh, Instagram TV, which is like a new kind of app, a new kind of feature that they have, right. which is like long, long form videos. So that's probably direct competition with YouTube, right? So, so we'll see what happens. 
Yeah, but I find Instagram to be the most engaging, and people are checking their yep. Instagram more than any other platform. Yeah. Okay, so now you're doing well. You got the you know thousands of subscribers, money coming in every month. You're getting a lot of good press. What's the craziest mm-hmm. thing that's happened to you so far on this journey? Oh man, there's a there's a there's a lot of crazy things that happened to me. Like I mean, like honestly, like more than uh, Dragons Den probably was. Uh, the biggest highlight, uh, I'd say, of Sneaker Club, like getting on the show and you know, like meeting those like great, great entrepreneurs and people who's people who's like started from scratch basically to get get to where they are and like getting advice from them. I'd say is 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 the best thing uh, that has happened to Sneaker Club so far. But like also like things like. You know, like I, I sort of like started believing in myself more than I did before, um, and I, I think it's been a great like great experience for me personally. Like, obviously, like I haven't stopped hustling since since the day I started sneaker up. Like, I still work like 14 to 60 to 18 hours some some days, uh, and and you mean man, man, like I honestly like enjoy it. Um, and like I remember, like when I first started sneaker up, like. I used to just hit up like retail spots because I didn't have any account to like fill up my car with like shoes and like drive back, unload them, like go back again. So like it it, it hasn't been like an easy journey so far, but like honestly, like it's it's been well worth it. So yeah, like it's 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 a it's like, crazy things happen every day, but I'd, I'd say Dragon's Den was the biggest highlight or the the, big, the craziest thing that happened to us. Right now, you just mentioned that you were buying sneakers at retail at retail. Sorry. How could it be profitable yeah. if you're buying them in retail? Oh, no, no. First two months, customers. we were not profitable at all. Until the accounts came along, we were, we were not pro- profitable. I just wanted to uh, get the packages out, get a brand awareness out there, and then yeah. um, obviously then work, work it from there. So obviously after the after the first brand came, Puma, then we got Saucony, so the other brands came along. So that's when we started making profit. Yeah. At first, we, uh, we, were, we were probably was break, breaking even because uh, – the accessories we used, we got them at a pretty significantly discounted price. Um, so we were probably breaking even, but um, not making a lot of money. Right. And you mentioned also that you started believing in yourself more, which is really, really healthy because once you're believing yeah. in yourself, then your business will do better and your team will believe in you more. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, there's still people, like, there's, there's still doubters and there's still, still haters saying, oh, like, what, like, what, like I, I read some of the YouTube comments, not that I take them, like, you know, personally or seriously, like, some people, like, what is this idea? Like, you put, like, shoes in a box and you send it out, like, go sell your stuff at a flea market. Like, those are the comments that I get, but it's it's more like it's not, it's, it's not actually, like, what it is. It's, like, how you get there and, like, how you build a brand. Like, I, I believe in this brand and I'm believe in like making this bigger so like i i totally like 200 percent believe in uh in sneaker Trap and like what's uh what the future holds for sneaker Trap. so like it's like to anyone who's listening out there if people are like doubting you like don't don't think anything of it just keep doing what you do oh that's great and how many people on the team right now uh, so we have four people only, so we're pretty lean. Uh, so my partner Jason and I run uh, most of the bulk bulk of the operations. So I take care of um, I take care of more of the operations, marketing, and the creative side of the business. Um, Jason does a lot of uh, PR. Uh, he does a lot of um, brand collaboration stuff um, and all that. And uh, we have Jessica handling customer service. And we have uh, Dave also helping out with packing, like the warehouse stuff, all that. I see. And we're a very lean say- team. <laughs> Sorry, I, I said we're a very, I said we are a very, very lean team, and I like to keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to run a business. Yeah. And what would you say the biggest challenge has been so far? Um, I'd say the ever-changing landscape of sneakers and like trends and. Young people thinking that, you know, that you have to wear what your favorite YouTuber is wearing, where, whereas, like, YouTubers get, like, paid money to, you know, obviously, like, unbox products or wear products. So it's, yeah. like, it's, it's, it's young people. Like, I think the challenge is, like, not more of, like, a business challenge, but it's, like, a social, like, norm where, like, 
people think you have to wear like the newest and the coolest and the most expensive sneakers to make you make you a man or like you know make you flashy or make you like appeal to others but which is totally wrong like you can wear like a pair of like twenty dollar like shack shoes from walmart and you can still look cool it's how you style it, it it's 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 your personal confidence it's not like what you wear like which i'm I'm a firm believer in that like that's why i i like personally i'm not like a not what you call hype beast where like you i i don't have to have like the latest sneakers like coming out every month like i don't i don't need to like i wear what i want and i I, I don't care what people think of it. And I think like young people should think the same. Like you don't have to have like the latest shoes or like the latest like Supreme shirt or clothes to, to wear. And like other young people who don't have those things and like you, you shouldn't be bullied for or made fun of for not having those material things. That's, that's not what life is, right? That's so a very that's, healthy that's, attitude that's... to life. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and from an entrepreneurial perspective, what would you tell people who are thinking of starting their own business? You know, it's a hard world out there. A lot of people are failing, and people are scared yeah. to do their own thing. What would you tell someone who is considering starting a business? I mean, honestly, like the first hurdle that you have to get rid of or jump over is like you not believing in yourself. But if you believe in yourself and you you think you can do it, you should you should. You should just jump off the cliff and take that leap of faith and like believe in yourself and actually do it. Uh, but most people, like what I find is they're like, oh, like I have this great idea, but I, you know, I'm waiting for like the perfect moment or like the right moment till I get all my ducks in a row to like start the business. But it's, it's there, there will never be a perfect time. You'll never have a perfect product to uh, introduce to the marketplace. So like with if you have a decent product, if you think, the product is good enough. Uh, I think what's more important is being first to the market, and then you can make adjustments to your 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 product as you go along. Mm -hmm. Like Sneaker Top was definitely not perfect. It's still not perfect. But like when we launched, but we're still making adjustments. We are still listening to our customers um, and taking their feedback and changing product, changing like the brands we include, changing the type of accessories we include every month. So so we take customer feedback really really seriously and we we keep changing the product and um and, and you don't really have to have a perfect product to 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 launch like you can always make adjustments to um to your product as you go along yeah i see a lot of young people like waiting for like that perfect moment or waiting for like everything to be perfect yeah, that's before never they gonna launch. Come. but like yeah that's never gonna come like you should just do it and like figure it out along the way so we have the nike slogan just do it <laughs> yeah you just do it <laughs> And back to uh, two more questions on Dragons Den. You mentioned there yeah. that you wanted Nike and Adidas. Did you get them yet? Uh, so we're currently working on Nike and Adidas at the moment. Uh, we should have them very soon. Um, we do not officially have them at the moment, but at, in certain markets we do have access to Nike and Adidas products. Uh, but officially Nike and Adidas or Nike or Adidas should come on board. Hopefully. <laughs> so we're awesome. currently working on it. And are you still packing all those boxes into your bathroom or you got a new facility? No, no, we moved out. Uh, so we have we have a dedicated uh, packing and shipping space uh, based uh, here in Toronto. So, yeah, we're out of the house. <laughs> nice. So this is a very inspiring story. You guys started relatively recently. Seems yeah. like you're very successful and you're going to be growing. You have a nice social media following good press and people seem to be very happy with your service. So I want to wish you much success in the future. And thank you so, so much for coming on the show. If people want to subscribe, you, where, where should they go? Uh, they should go to sneakitup.com, which is the global site. We ship anywhere in the world. Uh, sneakitup.ca for our friends here in Canada. Um, and yeah, and thanks for, thanks for inviting me on the show. And um, thanks for, speaking to me and thanks for giving me the opportunity to uh, tell the sneaker tub, the sneaker tub story to the world. Thank you. We really appreciate your time and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you again in the future. All right. Thank you. Take care guys. That was Kamad Silva, founder and CEO of 
sneakertub.com. I really enjoyed talking to him. Very positive guy. Lots of good energy. Anyhow, so people, let's be inspired. Take something from this, from all the episodes, and from everything we see in life. Every single thing that we see in life is meant to teach us something, and we need to learn from everybody and everything. Let's not be goats. Live life on our own terms. Do things that are good for us, not for everybody else. There is nothing stopping you. Literally nothing is stopping you from being the best version of yourself. So go out there, do something, make yourself proud, your family proud, God proud. And please, I want to hear from all of you. Uh, I love the feedback. A lot of people contacted me a couple of weeks ago. Someone sent me a message. He was like, so he was like, I love the show. I love the podcast. I love the content, the guests. It's great. Good energy. There's only one problem. You say the word wow too much when you're talking to people. Everything's wow, wow. And I was like, wow. Yeah, I do say it too much. But that's just me. I'm not going to change myself because you don't like the fact that I say the word wow. I can think about it. Maybe I'll add some more words to my repertoire. But that's me. That's all you get. If you don't like the word wow, find yourself another podcast to listen to. Thanks anyway. I want to hear from more of you. Please send me messages. Uh, you can contact me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Chusdil, at C-H-U-S-I-D-E-L. Additionally, you can follow us all. Uh, on all the channels for the podcast at You Are Not A Goat. We opened a YouTube channel. Look it up, youtube.com. You Are Not A Goat. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, you're going to want to follow that channel because there are going to be video episodes coming soon as well, and you do not want to miss those. A lot of exciting guests lined up. So stay tuned for that. And once again, I'm sorry that this show does not always come out on time. I am a bit of a busy guy and a little bit of a procrastinator, but... I'm working on myself, trying to make it come out as frequently as possible on time. And I look forward to seeing you very soon in the next episode of You Are Not a Goat. Have a wonderful weekend. God bless you all and see you later. You are not a goat. The podcast for you.